Thanksgiving week, and we have some great matchups that football fans should be thankful for. Uh, you're watching FanDuel TV's More Ways to Win. Thanks for joining us. Happy Thanksgiving from our family to yours. It's week 12 of the NFL season, and we're doing our thing. We're betting the biggest games, handing out best bets, and dropping best value DFS plays as well. I'm Lisa Kearney, hanging with you from the FanDuel Sportsbook here at the Meadowlands. But across the country, the rest of our team awaits. There you are. Hey, guys. Our sports betting expert, Dave Weaver, former NFL wideout and Super Bowl champ, James Jones in our L.A. studio. Sports talk radio host, Andrew Filipponi, joining us from Pittsburgh as always. And the face of Marquee Sports Network, our NFL expert, Cole Wright in Chicago. Hey, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. It is week 12. Let's kick this thing off. More Ways to Win starts now. And we're kicking off the show with Thanksgiving Day's matchup. Today, we've got a slate full for you. We've got the 7-3 and three Bills at the 4-6 and six Lions in the early game. So we're starting there. Detroit, actually the hotter team coming into this one and winning three in a row with the offense averaging 26 points per game. As for Buffalo, they've lost to a three, but still have the number two total offense and scoring offense. Guys, Bills are giving nine and a half points in this one, so it's a pretty big number. But let's break this thing down, starting with our betting experts, Dave and Pony. This game is for you. Dave, is this spread too big to back Buffalo? What do you think? Uh, I don't think it's too big. It's just great to have football on Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And, you know, the Lions always play on Thanksgiving. So yeah. as a better, I'm like, oh, just back the Lions. I remember like 20 years ago, they were getting something similar, right around 10 points against the Colts. Unloaded. They got to cover this. They lost like 43 to 9. Peyton Manning just out six touchdowns. I don't know if Josh Allen is going to throw six touchdowns, but I could see this being blowout city. The last seven Thanksgiving games that the Lions have had against the AFC, normally it's an NFC matchup, but against the AFC, 0-7 straight up, 1-6 against the spread. And I don't think that changes. Pony, don't fall for it. Yes, Detroit has won three in a row for the first time since 2017. Don't do it. Now, this is becoming old hat for the Bills, uh, Dave. They've played... In two out of the last three Thanksgiving games, they won both. They were just in Detroit for the Cleveland game. So any kind of home field short week advantage, I don't think it's there for the Lions. When the Bills win, they tend to win big. That's why this line's not big enough. Five of their seven victories have come by more than a touchdown. So when you factor that in, Detroit is going to be without its top corner they played two teams in the Giants and Bears in their last two games that have wanted to run the ball. The Bills are going to want to air it out. Friendly confines of a dome. Yeah, I think the Bills, they're going to be eating turkey legs on the sideline, James, after they get a blowout win. All right, so yeah, they're calling for blowouts. But James, this Lions team has played pretty well the last few weeks. Yeah. Do you think they can keep it close? Yeah, I can see you guys are not believers of the Detroit Lions, and I told you they would beat the Big Blue last week. But, hey, they've been playing really good football, but it runs out. It runs out. Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills are built to win a Super Bowl. The Detroit Lions are not built to win a Super Bowl. I think this game will be really close in the first half, and I think it's too much Buffalo Bills in the second half. I think you'll see some takeaways that they get on the defensive side of the ball turned into some points for Josh Allen in that offense, and I think eventually it gets ugly on that Thanksgiving day for the Detroit Lions. And Detroit, to be honest with you, just hasn't been playing well on Thanksgiving day, and I don't see that changing against a big time opponent in the Buffalo Bills. Challenge. The line is not big enough. All right, you guys, we'll see yep. about this one. Uh, let's get to the second game on the schedule today. We've got the Giants at the Cowboys, both teams seven and three. So this is a huge NFC East division game. You know this. Cowboys running back Tony Pollard has been absolutely hot, averaging 155 total yards over the last three games, six touchdowns for Pollard. Then you got the Giants. They've been exploited a bit here in the last few weeks. They're dealing with injuries 
They've lost two of three. Saquon Barkley was held to just 22 yards on 15 carries last week. By far his worst game of the season. Guys, let's bet this one. Do what we do. Cole, you're in on this one. Giants are a nine and a half point road underdog. Which side do you like? Well, Lisa, I don't know if you knew this or not, but the Dallas Cowboys, the first squad ever with two state driver's license, they've uh, unofficially changed their name to the Dallas Soda Cowboys because Dak, well, he played out of control on the road. He has two or more touchdown passes in each of the last three games and eight over his last four. And then, like you said, Tony Pollard, you add him in with a little dash of Zeke Elliott, and it's a Thanksgiving run game recipe. These two guys over their last three, 11 touchdowns combined. There's no stopping these two, and that should spell a little sour sausage stuffing for Big Blue when it comes to their defense. They're 14th overall, which isn't terrible, but Dallas, they're going to make that unit look lesser than. I think the Cowboys will win pretty easily here, 28-17, to 17, Dave. Maybe even more easily than that, because one thing that they've been doing is covering at home. You know, they, they've covered four straight against the spread, and not only they're covering, but they're covering those games by at least nine points. So, you know, they're, they're laying 10, they're covering by 19. So that could certainly happen here. The Giants have been struggling within the division, 0-4 against the spread, uh, the last four against the NFC East. And I can't get it out of my head from last weekend, Lisa, when – James Voice is in there saying, I am not a believer in <laughs> Daniel Jones. Uh-huh. I am not a believer in the New York Giants. Yeah. So today I'm taking James' uh, thoughts you. from last week Thank and applying you. that here. Thank and the you. Dallas Cowboys are already covered oh, against the Giants. Yeah. They beat them by seven with Cooper Rush yes. in New York. Now they have Dak at home, and they only need to win by three more points than that. So, yes, Cowboys. Yes, and I also pulled a statistic from your from your graphic there. Cowboys defense giving up just 174 that and a half passing yards per game, best in the NFL. Uh, James, yeah. how do you see this game going? Well, first off, man, I appreciate you being coachable, man. You're coachable, Dave. You know, <laughs> hey, he, he listened to me. But let me tell you something, right? We talking Kirk Cousins. We talking Justin Jefferson. We talking Dalvin Cook. We talking three points for the Minnesota Vikings, right? You think Daniel Jones is going to come and move the ball consistently on this Cowboys defense at the crib on Thanksgiving Day? It's not going to happen. Dak Prescott and this offense is putting up points in a bunch, and they're putting them up very, very fast, right? The New York Giants, I am not a believer in, like Dave said. I just don't think they are ready to compete at that elite level. The Cowboys are starting to show the world that they are an elite football team. Head coach Mike McCarthy has this team playing really good football. Two-headed monster when you got Zeke back in the running game, Tolly Pollard playing out of his mind. But not only that, like I said, Dak Prescott wasn't in this game last time. Dak Prescott is putting up points. This this Cowboys team is 30 points, 28 points, whatever they want to get to with Dak Prescott. And they just needed the defense to show up. And they showed up last week. They're going to show up again at the house. This is going to be a beatdown on Thanksgiving Day, Cowboys. Yeah. Yeah, the Giants are limping into this one as well. All right, you guys. Let's get to the final game on the schedule here on Thanksgiving Day. The 6-4 and four Patriots at the 8-2 and two Vikings. Minnesota coming off that 42-3 blowout loss against Dallas, speaking of. Vikings gave up a season-high seven sacks, scored a season-low three points. Then you got the Patriots defense, who's been hot, racking up four sacks last week, giving up just three points against the Jets. All right, Pony and Cole, this game is for you. The Patriots are two-and-a-half-point road dogs. Which side do you like, Pony? Somebody's got to take an underdog on this show. We're taking all the favorites, so I'm going to start that trend right now and go with New England. Uh, Three points by the Vikings. What a fraudulent team they are right now. The record is not indicative of the kind of team they are. They've got a minus now, a negative point differential. And then you've got New England. Uh, Tip of the cap to Bill Belichick, they have allowed six total points in their last two games. Yeah, they've got to work out kinks offensively. Mac Jones isn't great, but Belichick is the defensive mastermind, has it going again. Christian Darasaw, the great tackle, is going to miss this game for Minnesota. So that allows them to move Matthew Judon around. I think he's going to be in Kirk Cousins' face the entire game. And I think New England, plus 116, a Thanksgiving money line money maker, Lisa. Well, Pony, I, yes. I tell you what, I believed in Minnesota versus Buffalo. And you know what? 
they came through. We'll forget about what happened versus Dallas at the house. And the Bills, as we know, much more efficient when it comes to getting things done than that New England squad. Uh, Buffalo, they have the league's number two overall offense. And the Vikings held them to just six second-half points. But the Patriot team, they play with a defense that's tougher than leather. Bill B's unit, fourth league wide. And they held the opposition to 17 or fewer six times on the season. And every time that's happened, they come away with the win. So 17, that's going to be the magic number on Thursday. Uh, but for the Vikings defense, it's going to be the Kirk and Justin show. It's going to be a big bounce back defensively for Minnesota on the defensive side of the ball. They make it eight out of their last nine. They win this one. Close shave, 21-17. Cole, I can't believe you okay. are on this show. <laughs> Believing in Kirk Cousins. <laughs> I can't believe you believing in Kirk Cousins on this show, Cole. It, it worked two weeks ago. Three points, and you come on this show believing in Kirk Cousins after you just seen what Bill Belichick's defense did. Come on, Cole. It is going to be the same thing. I'll give them 10 points. But this is a copycat league, and if it's anybody that knows how to copy, it's Bill Belichick. And they are going to do a lot of the same things that this Cowboys defense did to this Minnesota Vikings offense. Kirk Cousins, I think this is prime time, right? Thanksgiving Day, prime time oh. game, right? And you believe, not only are you believing in Kirk Cousins, but it's not one o'clock, Kirk Cousins. You talking about prime time, Kirk Cousins? Come on, Cole. I got the underdog in this one, too. I'm with Pony. I like Bill Belichick and these Patriots beating the Minnesota Vikings. I'm not a believer in the Minnesota Vikings, neither. The way they win football games is not in a dominant fashion to be, to have this many wins as they have. I like Bill Belichick and the Patriots upsetting the Minnesota Vikings on Thanksgiving Day. I mean, those Vikings coming off seven (laughs) sacks. Mm -hmm. Seven Mm -hmm. sacks. All right, you guys. Uh, Great stuff. We're going to have great games all day long for you. We have plenty more picks coming up on this show here today. But first, I want to tell you about a special promotion for Same Game Parlay Bets through Monday. Yes, a happy Thanksgiving and more from us here at FanDuel. All customers can get up to $100 in free bets, win or lose. All you have to do is place a total of $20 or more on an NFL same game parlay. The more you bet, the more you'll get back in free bets. So check out the FanDuel Sportsbook app and make an NFL same game parlay to bet bet, to take advantage of this special offer now until Monday. And coming up here on more ways to win, turning a small wager into a Big win. Dave reveals this week's big payday parlay. And next, we're picking the biggest game of the weekend, including the first place team in each conference. See if our experts think Kansas City and Philly are good bets and why. We're coming right back. Stay with us. Let's get right to the biggest games this weekend and start with the 3-7 and seven Rams at the 8-2 and two Chiefs. Listen, we talk about this Chiefs offense each week, and rightfully so, but we got to single out here Travis Kelsey and give him mad props. He leads the NFL in receiving first downs and touchdowns, including three scores last week. Meanwhile, this Rams offense ranks in the bottom four in total offense, rushing offense, and scoring offense. Certainly not the outlook many had for this L.A. team coming off of that Super Bowl win. Uh, I was just saying it in commercial break. Uh, three wins for this team. Guys, check out the line for this one. The Chiefs are 14 and a half point favorites. Let's get all your picks here, starting with our betting experts. Dave and Pony. Um, Dave, are you willing to lay that many points? Well, look, first off, let's just start by saying the Rams are really, really bad right now. Let's not sugarcoat that. Yeah. But – This is the ultimate sandwich spot for the Chiefs. They're coming off of that thrilling win against their divisional rival, the Chargers. And next week, they're going to Cincinnati. I mean, they've been waiting for that game all year to make up for what Joe Burrow did to them last year. So I think this is a game that they win, but not by two touchdowns. And also, Pony, the last seven times that Mahomes has been a favorite of 10 points or more. He's only covered once. They have no reason to win this game by 30. They got the Bengals next week. They'll win it, but I don't think they win by two touchdowns. Dave, well, if they do win by two touchdowns, they still won't cover because the line's 14 and a half. So I'm with you on that. The Chiefs this year have not been great as a favorite of a touchdown or more in games. They've had it happen three times. 
They're one and two against the spread in those games. The only game they covered was against Jacksonville in that situation. They had Tennessee. That was an overtime game with Malik Willis at quarterback for Tennessee. So look, the Rams, we know they're shot. We know they're one of the worst defending champ teams in NFL history. But I think they'll lay it all out there. This is probably their biggest game of the year because they're not going to the playoffs. And I think Sean McVay will have them competitive, but obviously not competitive enough to win this game. You know what, Pony? That's my, that's, that's my worry, right? My worry is every time I turn the tape on and I watch the Los Angeles Rams, they just not they not leaving it all out there. And they right. just getting beat down by everybody. And this is even going to be worse. The Kansas City Chiefs are about to beat the Rams down. This is going to be a 20-plus point beatdown right here. And it's not because I'm a believer in Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs that much. It's because of what I've seen from this Rams team. This Rams team is absolutely terrible. And it's crazy to even think of Jalen Ramsey, Aaron Donald, Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup, all these guys that they have on this squad and they're this bad of a football team. But it starts by them not laying it all out there. And the Kansas City Chiefs are rolling right now. They are hot. I'm not, Lisa, I'm not going against the Kansas City Chiefs no more this year unless they go against probably Lamar Action Jackson or something. No but I've seen these boys, I've seen these boys scoring 10 seconds, 5 seconds, is one minute it does not matter they about to beat the Rams down I'm going to hold you to that, but I do have to say about the Rams, we saw what they were yeah. in week one when they were blown out at home by the Bills. I'm at that game watching. I'm like, yeah. what is what, what is this team? What are we seeing? And we've just seen that continue to play out throughout the season. All right, great stuff by you guys. Let's get to our next game on the schedule here in first place in the AFC to the top team in the NFC. We've got the 9-1 and Eagles hosting the 4-7 and Packers. Philly needed a touchdown with just over a minute left in the game at Indy to play pull off a double-digit fourth-quarter comeback. It was a great game, and they did avoid their second straight loss of the year. But then you look at the Packers. They started 3-1. and one. Now I feel like they're in free fall. They've dropped six of their last seven games. I'm excited to get James's perspective on this game, but I'm going to start with you, Cole. Uh, Philly is a seven-point home favorite. Do they win by more than a touchdown? What do you think? Well, Lisa, you might want to give these to James because they're noise reducing. I don't know if he wants to hear what I have to say because Philly, they're rocking that bend, but don't break mentality. They've shown that they can go out there and win close games. Case in point, last week versus Indy, they also shown that they can go out there and put some cushion in between themselves and the opposition. Six of nine wins have come by seven points or more, and they've also been quick starters. Uh, they've won the first half in seven of 10 games. And meanwhile, Green Bay, James, like we said, Earmuffs on this one right now. They're shopping out of the bargain bin. They've dropped six of the last seven. Lisa, you pointed that one out. And they've been outscored in the second half in four of those six games. And a slow start, that's going to equal a long day for A.A. Ron and company. The Eagles, they're going to fly in this one, 31-24. That's how I see it shaking out. Yeah, the, the Packers start out okay because they were comfortable at home, but they have really struggled on the road. Only one and four this year, and Philly's been very good at home covering four of their five games. Look at that bottom bullet point right there. Even James Jones has picked against the Packers the past <laughs> two weeks. Uh, Cole, where I come from, trash day is on Thursday, but Me too. the Eagles are taking out the <laughs> trash on Sunday here. By the way, Lisa, you can't spell garbage without James. GB. <laughs> yeah, take that, James. Oh, no, you didn't. You oh, I did. <laughs> you guys. I stepped back over here for a second. You two are something oh, else. Oh, man. <laughs> you, you, you two are something else this morning, right? Huh? They woke oh. us up a little early. You two are something else. But I'm going to tell you all something. I picked against the Packers back-to-back weeks because I picked against them against the Cowboys, right? And they won. So I picked against them last week, right? Because I thought, you know, hey, I thought it was going to I thought it was going to work again, right? A little reverse psychology. It didn't. But I'm picking my boys this no. week. And I'm picking my boys to win this game and go get after the Philadelphia Eagles. And this is the reason why, right? The last two weeks, right, Philadelphia started out fly, Eagles fly. They started out really hot, looked like they were unstoppable. And the last two weeks, it looks like people has figured them out. Washington Commanders figured them out. Right, Matt, Matt Ryan and the Colts had them on the ropes in that game, right? Mm-hmm. Jeff Saturday, 
I just see this right now. I see a trend with the Eagles right now, right? They are not playing good football right now. Thank God the defense played good last week, but they are not playing good football on the offensive side of the ball right now. I think Aaron Rodgers and this Packers team comes in there, gets a gutsy, gutsy, gutsy win to get themselves back in playoff contention. I got my boys this week. Uh-oh, the Eagle secret sauce has been exposed. Mm-hmm. Okay, here we are in week 12. This is going to be a good, fun <laughs> rest, of the, rest of the slate. All right, let's get to a matchup in the AFC that could have huge playoff implications here. Right now, the 7-3 and three Titans and the 6-4 and four Bengals are in the postseason. But since he's in that seventh and final spot, the two teams face off in Tennessee, the Titans feature the league's top rusher in Derrick Henry. And then on the other side, you've got the Bengals. They have the fourth-ranked passing offense. So, Pony and Cole, this game's for you. Two opposite offensive styles clashing here. The Bengals are actually one-and-a-half-point road favorites. Pony, what do you think of that line? My favorite game of the year. I love the Bengals in this game. I really do. Ooh, I think the wow. Titans, they're so well-coached. They're so disciplined. But they're really not that talented outside of Derrick Henry. I think it shows up in this game. They have only beaten one team with a winning record all year, and that was the Washington Commanders back when Carson Wentz was still the quarterback. They have beaten bad teams. So unless you think Cincinnati is bad, which I don't, uh, you should take the Bengals in this game, even though it is in Nashville. Such a small line. Bengals minus one and a half. My favorite game of the year, Cole. Well, Pony, like you said, uh, right now, uh, this Titans team and not very talented. And uh, despite some of their success, they have struggled to find that true identity, at least when it comes to their offense. Now, King Henry, Derek of Nashville, oh, the league's only 1,000 plus yard rusher, at least thus far. And the Titans, 30th overall offensively. How does that happen? Well, their passing offense, it's worse than the big picture and the saving grace for Tennessee is they're thicker than thieves at the house. Three and one, while Cincy, they've scuffled away from the house of 500 on the road in Tennessee. Their defense is going to play better than that middle of the pack showing the Titans. They're going to make it eight of the last nine. It's going to be a close shave, but 24, 21, they're going to lean on the King in this one, Pony. Call I'm with you. I, I it's, it's just, it's, you it's know, right they know how to win, right? Under Rabel, they know how to win, right? This is how they want to play football. People looking at them like, hey, it ain't flashy. You know, this is how Coach Rabel wants to play football. Run King Henry, play action pass, let Tannehill make some throws. But no Jamar Chase, JoJo Mixon coming off a concussion. We do not know if he's going to be available or how he's going to play, right? This offense is not the same without Jamar Chase. The Titans are playing really good defense right now on the defensive side of the ball. I don't see JoJo Burrow having too much success without Jamar Chase out there and without JoJo Mixon if he is not able to go. I think it's too much King Henry. I think the Titans play the type of football that they want to play, ground and pound, eat the clock up play good defense and they come out of this ball game with a W. Yeah, the Titans have won 7 of 8. You saw the screen there. 8 and 0 oh against the spread and they're getting points at home on a holiday weekend, guys. I love that. All right, coming up. Pony has hit four of his favorite, favorite picks in a row. Yes, four in a row. See who he's got covering this week to keep his streak alive. Plus, we've got your daily fantasy fix covered as well. We're helping you stack your lineup and taking a look at the best value plays here in week 12. You're watching More Ways to Win, and we're coming right back. Rolling on here on More Ways to Win. Thanks for hanging with us this Thanksgiving weekend. Underdogs, favorites, plus money, safe plays, which is the way to go? Well, you don't have to pick. You get to do both, but you must find the best value when placing your bets. So we're giving out our best bets for each in this week's Dog and Pony show. Here you go, guys. I love this segment so much. Pony is playing the part of Pony, and our special guest, Chad Millman, will be bringing the dogs. Great having Chad back with us. Chief Content Officer of the Action Network. Chad, hold on to your picks for just a second. Pony, need to shout out, shout you out for uh, hitting both of your picks last week. You got the Patriots and the 49ers. You've got four in a row over the last two weeks so you're going to start us off with your favorite favorite here for week 12 what you got feel good about this one denver as a favorite in carolina and favored for a reason despite what has been a lousy season sam darnold gonna make his carolina panthers debut 
Wrong time to make it. Denver's defense is elite. They're top three in scoring defense. They're top three in total defense. There's a stat that if every game uh, after regulation, if the Broncos offense had scored more than 18 points, uh, Denver would have eight wins right now. Their defense has been exemplary. It's been outstanding. And that'll continue against Sam Darnold, who will make his season debut the third Panther starting quarterback of the year. Right. Okay. Great points by you, Pony. Uh, Chad, give me an underdog that you like this week. All right. So we all just watched the 49ers crush the Cardinals on Monday Night Football. It's the primetime game. Everybody's watching. They win by four touchdowns. Automatically fade the Niners when they get back home and they're taking on the New Orleans Saints. They're right now favored by nine and a half points. That's about two and a half points of value, according to the wise guys projections. There's a couple things that are in play here. One, how amazing the 49ers played when they had all four of their main primary weapons in Brandon Ayuk, in Kittle, in Christian McCaffrey, in Debo Samuel. But we're also talking about a Saints team that lost to the Steelers two weeks ago and then struggled to beat a beat-up Rams team last week in a game that was close throughout the entire game. So you're getting a little bit more value on the Saints than you are on the Niners. And there's one more thing to consider. Kyle Shanahan in his career as a favorite at home covers less than 30% of the time. Wow. All right, great stuff, Chad. Pony, give me your second favorite favorite here for Week 12. Well, I heard James say, you know, the Bengals, what's their offense without Jamar Chase? Uh, Pretty darn good. 37 points against the Steelers with everybody healthy on defense. T.J. Watt and Minka Fitzpatrick, a unit that forced five turnovers in their week one game. And then the week before against Carolina, 42 points. So outside of that one blip on the radar, that Browns Monday night game, the Bengals have scored 30 plus points in four out of five games. Uh, The Tennessee Titans cannot and will not keep up with that. I love them to go to Tennessee and pull out a win on Sunday. That's a tight line right there. Okay, Pony, thank you. Chad, give me another underdog you like here this week. All right, well, I will say that I agree with Pony that I love the Bengals this week as a favorite. The other underdog that I like in this spot is Atlanta against Washington. We're one game into the Taylor Heineke is a starter, not a backup with questions era. I don't think Washington should be more than a field goal favorite against anybody at this point. So you're getting a little bit more value on Atlanta. Also consider this, Atlanta has had eight games that have been decided by one score or less. Seven of those games have been by four points or less. The script for the Falcons is always the same. Run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. Keep the game close, control the clock. Don't make mistakes against a Washington team that is prone to having a quarterback, even though he's the starter now, he likes to take shots. This gives them an opportunity for a couple more possessions where they can extend the clock, own the clock, keep the game closed. Give me give me Atlanta plus four. Chad, I love Atlanta's strategy there on your full screen. No stupid mistakes. Just <laughs> that's, that's my life game plan. Uh, all right, Pony, <laughs> let's quickly recap your two favorites here. Uh, you like two road favorites here. We got the Broncos and the Panthers. Also, the Bengals at the Titans. And then, Chad, let's take a look at your dogs here. You're backing the Saints, getting points in San Francisco, and the Falcons getting the points at Washington. Awesome stuff, guys. You can bet these dogs and favorites right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And I always like to remind you, you can get more of Chad's insight by listening to the Favorites podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And also make sure to download the Action Network app for expert picks, live scores, and stats. Awesome having you with us, Chad. Thanks, guys. All right. Now it's time for everybody's favorite new segment. Dave, you ready? Dave's Big Payday Parlay. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you get, you bet a little, you get a lot of cash when all your legs hit this weekend. Dave, give these people what they want. How many legs for us here in Week 12? Hey, we, we tried to make 72000 last yeah, week. It didn't we work did. out. We tried to hit the big we, we lost 20 bucks. So right. we're going to play eight teams today, Lisa. 
no spread, so we just need teams to win. Some of them are big favorites. Some of them are underdogs, just teams that have to win the game. We're going to start with Carolina. Pony was talking about Denver's defense. How about Carolina's defense holding Lamar to 13 points last week? I'm with they you lost, this, but so. I think the Panthers will shut Absolutely. down the Broncos. So Sam we're going to start Panthers with an underdog. Broncos. One yeah. more underdog, yeah. a baby home dog, the Browns hosting the Bucks. Mm. They could beat them. Oh, yeah. Uh, so now our $20 is up to over 100 just like that on two go. teams. Come on, okay, Brownie. did I see this stat right? The Jets averaged in the second half 2.7 inches a play, not oh yards. My goodness. They were like minus 21 passing. Yeah. I mean, the Bears are going to go in yeah, not to Justin MetLife to the and win. Yeah. So there's another underdog. And my best bet of the week is the Raiders. I Raiders. like the way that they got that win. They're going to shred the Seahawks Ooh. secondary. So we started out with there four underdogs. So oh, we're up yeah. to about $800. Come we're going to get a little chalky here. Yeah. Page two, look, we're using a minus 1,100 team, but it, it adds some money in there, almost $100 yeah. added. So we we'll juice it up just a little bit. I don't think the Chiefs cover, yeah. but they win. And then we're going to go to the Niners. Niners. I mean, how Niners. are you going to lose to the Saints at home? That's not, not happening. Lose. We're up to over $1,000 now. We're going to close it out with the Eagles. Let's take out the trash against the Packers, 1,400, hanging his head on that one. And we're going to close it out, <laughs> Monday Night Football, bet against Mike Tomlin at your Ooh. own risk. 19-4 in yeah. his lifetime on oh. Monday nights. So there's an underdog Never to end it. Never go against Tomlin. $20, Lisa. It's not 72000 but that would be a nice payday. Oh, 3250 yeah. I'll take it. Sometimes you have to take your biggest <laughs> shot and just see what happens. That was last week. This yeah. is a little more measured, Dave. Okay, I like where you're going with this. All right, uh, still, it's a ton of uh, great money right there. Great stuff by Dave. And look at those odds just skyrocket. See what Dave did. Tail Dave, create your own parlay to win big on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. You can do it right now. All right, we've got a long Thanksgiving weekend break. And if you haven't joined us for Daily Fantasy well, now is the time. FanDuel has a bunch of DFS contests live right now where you can win thousands of dollars on FanDuel.com. The key to success is value at each position. We preach it every single week. Week 12 is no exception. Jim Sonis is a senior writer and analyst for Number Fire. He's got his best value plays here, focusing on the players taking the field Thanksgiving Day. What you got for us, Jim? Thanks, Lisa. On this Thanksgiving slate, if you want to get to guys like Josh Allen, like Stephon Diggs, like Tony Pollard, you got to spend down somewhere, but some good values across the board on FanDuel for this slate. That begins at tight end with Dalton Schultz coming in at $5,800. Schultz has had a tremendous workload since Dak Prescott came back. 20% overall target share with 37% inside the red zone. Good yardage upside. The Cowboys implied total is super high. So Dalton Schultz, good way to say salary at tight end. Sticking to that same game, on the opposing side, I do like wide receiver Darius Slayton coming in at $6,400. No Wandale Robinson here should open up a lot of targets in this Giants passing offense. And Slayton had 10 targets last week, despite Robinson getting 13 to himself. Slayton had two deep balls in that game and can convert on the deep work that he gets. And Darius Slayton playing inside is a good option once again for this week. At running back, my top option for value is Devin Singletary coming in at $6,900. Singletary playing on a team with a super high implied total and has had a decent role recently. The Bills have been more run heavy with Josh Allen's elbow being banged up and Singletary has benefited nine red zone chances for Devin Singletary in their week 11 win over the Browns. The Singletary, $6,900, playing on a great offense, a good way to save some salary to hopefully get you back up to all those fun studs we got here, Lisa, for the Thanksgiving slate. And happy Thanksgiving to you, Jim. Thank you so much. Uh, set your lineups at FanDuel.com and follow Jim on Twitter at Jim Saunas. Check out his Covering the Spread podcast wherever you get your podcasts. All right, continuing on here on More Ways to Win. Coming up, we're hopping on the odds and hitting up all the markets. Our favorite spread, money line, and total bets coming up next. Plus, are the Dolphins for real? And can the Bucks win their third game in a row? We're going to answer all your questions. Our expert versus our ex-player debate. Those games and more. That's coming up next. We're coming right back. Welcome back to more ways to win here on FanDuel TV. Happy Thanksgiving to you all. It is time for our betting expert to take on our ex-player in a betting debate based on eye test 
and experience. Okay, each of our betting experts, we're going to go toe-to-toe with James. James, you need to wear the T-shirt, nine-year NFL vet, Super Bowl <laughs> champ, or just wear your ring, maybe. Um, wear the ring, the jerseys, all the things, guys. Let's give the 7-3 and three Dolphins some love, huh? They're hosting the 1-8-1 and one Texans. The Dolphins have won four in a row. They rank third in total offense. Now, you look at the Texans. They have lost five in a row. They rank second worst in total defense. Dave, makes sense that the Dolphins are giving 13. How are you playing this one? And actually, is that line even big enough? Yeah, you know, it does make a lot of sense. And before the year started, nobody would have thought that the Dolphins would be a 13-point favorite over anybody, probably. But they have exceeded everybody's expectations, including my own. You know, Mike McDaniel, he's plus 500 right now to win Coach of the Year. The Eagles' Nick Sirianni is minus 125. I think the Dolphins can go a long way, and I think McDaniel has a great chance of winning that award. So that's where I would start with the bet. But two is 11 and four at home against the spread, and the. McDaniel's faith in him has been unwavering, yeah. and you could see it in Tua's confidence. He's oh, playing yeah. so well. I think Miami does good things in this game, and going forward could go a long way, maybe yeah. all the way to the Super Bowl. I absolutely agree. You're talking about an MVP candidate in, in Tua, right? Spinning the ball all over the yard to Waddle, to Tyreek Hill, to Gasecki. Anybody run game coming downhill, right? This Miami Dolphins team is playing really good football. You add Bradley Chubb on the defensive side of the ball, that defense will get better, right? And the Houston Texans, right? They are just a team that is in rebuild mode right now out there with Lovey Smith, right? Can't find a lot of points on the offensive side of the ball. Can't stop anybody on the defensive side of the ball. That's formula for losses. You got a big time offense coming in. Too much to it. Guys, my husband played for the Falcons and Seahawks. My son this week announced he's a Dolphins fan. Uh, All right. Pony, the Ravens have quietly won four in a row with their defense giving up 14 and a half points in those games. Look at the Jags. They've lost six of seven, but are coming off a bye week, so they've had more time to prepare for this matchup. Pony, the Ravens, four-point road favorites. Who do you like? I like Jacksonville. Uh, Every single one of their home games this year, has been decided by one score. So these are close games in Jacksonville. The Ravens needed, James, before you put your head down, they needed 55 minutes to pull away from Baker Mayfield and the Panthers. Let me say that again. Baker Mayfield. This is a road game against a better quarterback. It will be close. Take Jacksonville. Pony. Your cuckoo for Coco Puffs, okay? <laughs> because this right here is absolutely crazy. First off, on the last segment, you bragged about the Bengals putting up big points against the Steelers and the Panthers. <laughs> That's what you bragged about. Now you are saying Jacksonville is going to beat Lamar Action Jackson and the Baltimore yeah. Ravens. It's not like going to happen. Line. How do you you think they going to score on this Baltimore Ravens defense with Roquan Smith in the middle of that defense? I do. They are not going to have a chance of scoring any points, especially enough points to beat Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. I got Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens big in this game, Pony. They get back on track doing what they do, running the football, Lamar Action Jackson being Lamar Action Jackson, and they always play good defense. That's going to continue. This is going to be a Baltimore Ravens W. You sent that warning shot earlier in the show. We knew that was coming. Thank you, James. Yeah. Good stuff, guys. All right, Cole, you're up tapping him for Pony now. Let's talk about Tom Brady yep. and the Bucks, who are going for their third straight win. Guys, the run game has been an issue all year long. They rank dead last in the NFL in rushing yards per game. They're facing a Browns team that's giving up just about 27 points per game. That's tied for second most in the league. So you know what we're working with here, Cole. The Bucks are three-and-a-half-point road favorites. How do you see this one going? Well, at least I tell you what, Tom's got some extra free time on his hands and he must have been watching the NBA because right now he's all about load management. He knows that his squad is in first place and that's all they need right now. They also know that they have seven games left to go and three of those are versus division teams and all of them are less than 500. Only two games versus teams that are above 500. That's San Francisco and Cincinnati and the Browns defense. Well, they're bottom half of the league, and they've shown problems defending the pass. And Tom Brady, currently fourth in passing yards. He's looking to catch up a little bit with Patrick Mahomes. So I think that the Bucs are going to sling it in route to a win, 27-14. to 14. I know James is on the same page with me, right? 
27-14. That much a believer in Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Cole, you know I love you. You know you're my brother. Come but on. I am Come going on. to disagree with you on this one. I am not a believer in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, right? You should have lost the game against a very stinky Rams team. And that the Rams let you come back and get the ball back, I don't know how, and go down there and win the game. And then you play solid against the Seattle Seahawks and Geno Smith's team out there in Germany. But, no, I don't see anything changing with this Tampa Bay Buccaneers team, right? They're not consistent on the offensive side of the ball. They don't know who they are. They can't run it. You're trying to put the ball in Tom Brady hands to throw the ball all over the yard. It hasn't turned into a lot of wins. That's why they only have five. I don't see it changing. I like the Brownies. I like Jacoby Brissett and the Brownies and Chubb coming downhill winning this ball game. I'm just not. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have to show me that they are a consistent football team. Right now, they are on a roller coaster, and I am not a believer, Cole. I got the Brownies. Not getting on that ride. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Now let's get to the Week 12 odds. Screaming for some sugar. Guys, let's go. As usual, our experts are all over these lines. They're giving out their favorite spread, money line, and total bet. So give me some of that sugar, guys. It's part of our weekly competition where each of the guys get 100 virtual dollars for those three bets. So, Dave, where are you wagering that 100 bucks? I'm going with the Las Vegas Raiders, and I'm going to put $55 to make 50 plus three and a half. They will destroy the Seahawks and put up a lot of points in that game. As far as my money line, I'm going to go with the Browns to uh, to cover or to actually win Come that on, game Dave. against Tampa. Going, yeah, with that underdog, a baby dog. And then uh, because I think the Raiders are going to put up a lot of points and winning, Pony, I'm going to double down on that total and bet that for 25. By the way, the biggest upset of the show, nobody's even referenced my mustache yet. <laughs> and it's coming in. <laughs> It is coming in, brother. Well, Thanksgiving dinner's almost ready, and I don't want to ruin my <laughs> appetite, Dave. That's why I'm trying not to look at it. Uh, I like the Texans. Dave went on this soliloquy about big favorites in the NFL, and then he took Miami. So I'm a little bit confused by that, about how big favorites don't cover. I think Houston keeps it closer than 13. But I am with Dave on the Raiders. Uh, I think the Raiders, the Adams connection, Seattle rust maybe setting in. I don't know. Maybe that... Uh, Geno Smith pumpkin uh, shows up. I think the Raiders play it close. And then the under in Jets bears. We don't know how healthy fields is. Are they going to use him as much as a runner? Who's going to start at quarterback for the Jets with the Zach Wilson controversy? The under is a great bet in that game. All right, you guys, hit up the FanDuel Sportsbook now to place your bets before kickoff. And coming up on the show, who knew the lowly Lions were going to go on the road and beat the Giants? Well, I'll tell you, Dan Campbell and James Jones. Yep, he called the upset. He has nailed the last two Moneyline moneymakers. So who is he putting on upset alert this week? We'll tell you just after the break. All right, you guys know I'm all about that plus money. So let's focus on, focus on some money line money makers right now. Yes, upset alert time, and we're giving them the bet emoji treatment. You're welcome, America. Okay, before we get James and Cole's picks, how about a shout out for James, who picked the Lions on the road to well upset done, the James. Giants last week? Nicely done. Try all right, it's a tease you. for your pick in just a moment because, Cole, you're up first. Let's hear your upset special for this week, Cole. Well, James, even a broken clock is right twice a day. But uh, when it comes to uh, my dog this week, uh, the Chargers, five and five, and they've been outscored this season by 31 points. And uh, this is going to be a make or break game for Coach Staley and company. And uh, I look at this one, well, it comes to job security implications for Cliff Kingsbury because Arizona is still in the hunt for home win number two. If they don't get it, Kingsbury could be looking for some consulting work. I think they keep him employed this week, 24-20. Arizona, they rise up as a dog in this one. Thanks, Pony. You bet. I'm with you, Cole. You know the Cardinals, Cole. Yeah, hey, yeah that, that's, Cardinals that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got some issues there in L.A. Cole, did Looks we like. watch? The, All right, James. They, they just played Monday, Cole. You got a chance to see them. Are you picking them today? <laughs> I, I, I was forced to pick a dog, James. All right, James. <laughs> You're up. You're up, James. Who's your dog? Who's your dog for this My week? My dog. 
are my dogs. <laughs> and that is the Green Bay Packers to beat Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagles, right? I'm trying to tell you guys. I've seen this before. I've started 14-0. I know how it looks when you start playing bad football, and that is how it is looking right now for these Eagles. They are starting to play bad football. They are not in sync on the offensive side of the ball, and this offense looked like they were unstoppable. Aaron Rodgers as an underdog, I never like it. I'm a believer in 12, and I think they get it done. That's bad football. The mm. Packers wish they could yeah. play that kind of football. <laughs> if that's bad, <laughs> exactly. then what are the Packers? I love Two. that pick, James. I'm with you. I'm riding with you, baby. Thank you, Let's Paul. go. Two in go a row. Pack, go. Two in a row, and they still don't believe in me, man. That's a shame. Shame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why we play the games. All right, awesome stuff. If you agree with Cole or James, you know what to do. Hit up the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now to place your bets and get that plus money before kickoffs. All right, and that is a wrap. That's week 12. It is here. We've got you ready. Check out all the bets that we talked about and more on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And remember, we've got your back every single week. Join us Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday Getting ready here on FanDuel TV. From all of us here at FanDuel, happy Thanksgiving week to you and your family. Enjoy the games. We'll see you right back here next week.